morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 310. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, and also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have uh, David Rosam. Uh, David is a digital marketer from the south of uh, England. Uh, he uh, is in West Sussex. Um, you can find David at writingforseo.org and uh, also uh, uh, davidrosam.com. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's uh, also a Google Top contributor in the AdSense uh, community in the English language. Um, you can find Masataki at wasaweb.net. Michael Fisher Kirshner is um, uh, head of SEO for Turn River Capital. Uh, he's based uh, near Silicon Valley in, in on the west coast. Uh, of uh, the USA. Um, Richard Hearn is uh, uh, based in Thailand. Uh, R Richard uh, is uh, a troubleshooter for higher echelon sites. And um, we normally would have Tim Kepper, but he's not here yet. All right, so uh, let's um, move on with our first uh, question. And let me see, I've got to click this button. All right, uh, the, the first one is from Thomas Patrick McKee. Uh, he said, how do I find the backlinks that um, may be doing me harm? Uh, I want to clean up my backlinks uh, with a little pruning. How do I find uh, them? And what is the most effective way to disavow them? What if there are thousands? I mean, there are services that help I mean, just like there are other areas for SEO, there are services that help kind of tell you what potentially some of those harmful links are. Um, the uh, But if you're needing in terms of a, a, a directly like, what are my backlinks? There are a lot of tools out there for that in the first place. Um, um, we have, I mean, you can get some of the backlinks and look through your own through something like Google Search Console. Um, there are tools such as Majestic and Ahrefs um, that can collect a lot of that said data, and you can kind of review it manually yourself if, if you're familiar with kind of uh, what you define as good or bad. Um, but generally kind of um, unless you're really in kind of an industry where uh, people are targeting you, um, or you've found sites that in the past um, have been doing bad things. It's not necessarily something uh, that you need to 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 be focusing on in the whole. Um, okay, so I see the top comment is paid. That's not likely to be good. Yeah. So um, if you want to go through kind of that, then yeah, use some of the tools like Majestic and Ahrefs so you can go and review them. Um, if you want to know kind of the type of links, then there are other services. I don't recall which ones are the preferred offhand um, for assessing poor quality links, but there are a number of out there. Maybe somebody else has mentioned it in there um, for those that can kind of at least give you a starting point for, for what kind of links might be potentially not very good. Thank you, Micah. Look, yeah, I, I can't move on without uh, also uh, thanking uh, um, the people who answer questions in our communities uh, 
uh, through the week um, as questions are asked uh, that they're uh, covered. Um, people like Dave Elliott and uh, Michael Martinez. Um, we, we are truly grateful. It, it makes uh, our service uh, so much more useful. Can I just make right. uh, a Anybody? Uh, sorry, go ahead, Richard. I was just going to, just, just one thing that comes to mind is the, that you mentioned you got 7,000 back links. And something that comes to mind there is that some of those might be site wide links from crappy sites. So it might be easy, or may or may not be easy, but if he finds sites where he's got site wide links, uh, they're the ones he could probably, the low hanging fruit that he could probably try and get rid of. Yep. And, and generally, uh, also, uh, I guess, um, could also add that you know, when you're disavowing, you, might, uh, you, you have the option to dis disavow a URL or uh, um, an entire site. And it's usually um, more efficient to just dis disavow the entire site. That's, of course, if Google takes any notice of the, the disavow list. <laughs> I knew that would make you laugh, Richard. <laughs> All right, um, let's um, call it an answer. We'll move on with the next. This one from Usman Ghani. Um, Usman, it's titled, I want to invest around $1,000 on a blog. Um, Usman said, uh, I need guidance. Uh, I want to invest um, uh, around a thousand on a blog. I have two options. One, um, I have already acquired a new domain theme and logo. And um, two, I have a domain uh, slash blog which was penalized from Google in 2012 due to thin content, I think. Uh, it has a domain authority, page authority, etc. Um, it has uh, 40 unique, unique visitors per day, as I'm not working on this one. And the site is www.webmastergrade.com. Uh, 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 My question is, should I invest in a new domain or a domain which has good... Uh, authority uh, but maybe still still penalized although i can see even some of the existing articles uh, still rank uh, on the uh, first page uh, of uh, a google search results um and i i really feel uncomfortable talking about domain authority and page authority because it's just a moz thing but any, anyway, you, you get the message. Um, Usman said, I'm waiting for your sincere and expert advice. No easy answer. Uh, I think Michael Martinez gave a decent answer there. And I suppose all things when equal, it might be better to use the older domain because it's indexed, it has stuff that ranks. Um, but, you know, you can't really use this DAPA stuff to determine this. You know, you start a new domain and you do it really well, you can rank quickly. It's it's quite possible. So, um, you know, it depends what he's going to do with it and how much he's going to invest in it to, to, to build good content on it, really. I think it, it, it's... Um, 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 Michael's comment... Um, the best freelance writers are not cheap. Uh, save your $1,000 and build a site that you enjoy visiting and working on in your spare time. 
Um, yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, I think that's the point, isn't it? $1,000 really doesn't stretch that much. I mean, it sounds like a decent amount of money, but once you start to think about what can you actually get for that amount of money, then I think the answer is not much. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's um, move on for this one. Usman, I, I hope you're, you're happy with the, the response we've given. Got five questions tonight. We're more than halfway through. Uh, this one from Trent uh, Studios uh, on how I should write my content. Uh, Trent said, hello, everyone. I've been watching Yoast video tutorials on Cornerstone articles. For those that offer services such as construction, do you think it's better to have, for example, a basement remodeling Cornerstone article and then a separate base, basement remodeling article that talks about and uh, sells the basement remodeling service, and yet another s separate basement page uh, which has a contact form so people could hire the company. Or combine the basement remodeling services page with the basement remodeling contact form page or just have uh, a separate uh, cornerstone articles for each service and they all link to a generic contact form slash page. Thank you in advance. I think there's many different names for this, this technique. Some people call them pillar pages and they're sort of like hoe and spoke. There's various different names for this, I presume. The big question is, if this person is selling basement remodeling services, what sub keywords are there from that? Like that's, that sounds pretty niche to me as it is. So I don't quite know whether they're, they're getting into too much detail on something that is a bit too niche already. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's quite big. Maybe there's lots of different search terms that are around basement remodeling. Um, very hard to say, but I'm not sure that this person really grasps what the purpose of this is from an SEO perspective. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, th I think it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's kind of getting involved in the mechanics again, rather than thinking about what, um, what people are actually buying. Um, and again, I'm not sure about basement remodeling. Um, is is this part of a whole load of building services? In which case, it's likely to be something that's fairly niche. Um, if the, um, the the site is about basement remodeling, perhaps you could have sub pages about um, uh, about damp coursing, about how to excavate. Uh, down the uh, further down, maybe um, shoring up walls or something. I, I I don't know, but it seems to me that there could be some more um, s some more um, some more services uh, that uh, you could go on about um, as part of basement remodeling. But the question is, do people go out looking for those things? Is it is this part of the searcher intent? So, um, you know, damp courses for basements? I don't know. Do your research, find out whether people are searching on it. Think about how how significant a part of the, the website is. Um, there's nothing magic about cornerstone um it's something that that you you need to think about in terms of the structure of your site and also the what your uh what your customers or, or what the site's customers are looking for and buying 
Richard, you look as if you were going to jump in there. No, I just I just was rereading it. Like they, they talk about contact forms and whether they should have a generic contact form or have a contact form for each service and should that contact form be on the service page or a separate page. Um, I I think they're they're getting uh, they're getting caught up in the weeds here. They they should do what will work for users, and this is no real bearing on SEO. I mean, there's probably no need for them to have multiple contact form pages unless there's some reason on the business end to do that. And otherwise, you just have a contact page, and people will contact you and say, well, I'm interested in this service or that service. Um, really, at the end of the day, you want to get the lead. So you don't put barriers in the way of people actually giving you that lead. Um, just make it as easy as possible for users and think, what would you do or what would you... what If you were presented with this, this scenario on another website, what would suit you best? Um, I, I, yeah, I think that this... <coughs> The, 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 the person posing the question is, is just getting a bit caught up on things that aren't that important, really. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> website is a means to an end, isn't it? What you want is the business, and the website is to capture that audience. So, yeah, it, it does seem as if the priorities are perhaps um, mixed in this instance. You know, ranking for something in itself is not the end. It's a means. Yeah, fair enough. Um, um, okay. All right, uh, let's um, call, call that answered. I think it's been answered perfectly well. And we'll move on to the next. We're flying through these tonight. Craig Anthony asked a question titled, how many words do I need to beat my competitors? Uh, Craig said, um, I'm trying to figure out how many words I need uh, to, to beat my competitors. I found this competitor with very few words on their page. But when I did a word count, it showed they have over 20K words. It's odd. Uh, as many as you um, so question really is just, you know, from a competitor standpoint, um, how it's it better is what satisfies the right user intent in order to do that you get the most amount of backlinks, the most amount of interest, um, and metrics that Google can factor in to suggest that you should be winning out. Um, that, depending on the situation and the set of results, can be a lot more, and it could be a lot less. Uh, there are situations where, for example, you went out because you provide a tool um, that has not too many words versus, say, maybe a guide that's ranking up there. So it's hard to say offhand and on its own the amount of words that's really needed. Um, the better way is kind of thinking about it is what can you do to stand out and succeed um, versus your competitors. Yep. Okay. Any more on this one? All right. Let's um, move on to our uh, last question of uh, the morning. This one uh, is from Chris Marcus. It's titled, How important is log file analysis for SEO? You know, this one is an interesting one. There were some pretty good answers on this. But I think one thing that everyone failed to mention is that the reason why so few sites actually do log file analysis is because it's quite complicated and there's a lot of overhead to actually analyzing your log files. And the larger your site is, the more complex it is to do. Um, it's, not, it's not easy to do. Log files are ancient, you know? It's an ancient... Uh, Setup where they where they're the, the, just these very large text files and actually 
managing these files is is not trivial. You know, most most applications that do it, you're, you're sort of into enterprise class for any sort of large site. So there's a real there's a cost to doing it. And um, that said, it, it can be very interesting if you can do this and you can look to see, especially from an SEO perspective, to see what Google is crawling, um, because you won't get it anywhere else. And uh, I work with quite a few sites that use Botify and use the log file analysis there. And it is, it provides a lot of insight and you start to see what Google likes and what Google doesn't like. Um, but that said, like it's expensive. We you frog have got have got a log file analyzer that's that's similar to their their crawler that is quite good. But again, the problem is that when your log files get huge, um it's not easy to 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 work with these files. Yeah, and this is this is where kind of I disagreed with a number of the uh, comments previously. Um, personally, I, I find it as the small the it's scales up in an importance of, of a need for a log file. Um, I disagree that any website needs it. I think you can deal with some real basic stuff of which, yeah, you can have literally just a, a hits file, very high level, and just be like, hey, are we having any rogue bots? Block them. Done. Like, you don't need anything else. Um, you know, is Googlebot actually growing the site? OK, good. Uh, for smaller sites, it's, it's really just very high level um information and sometimes all that you get from search console is even sufficient as the site scales up on the other hand then it becomes more important uh because the larger the site the more pages the, lim the limitations of what google will crawl become that much more critical and so what kind of pages they're hitting what kind of issues scale um become more problematic and i think the likelihood of specific issues related to Googlebot increase as a site size increases. So when when effectively that means the importance of a log server file or log file analysis is almost non-existent at a small site level. It's not to say that you, it can't happen, um, but as kind of Richard notes, the amount of time and effort and cost to put all that together for an off chance situation, not worth it most of the time. To, to, to quantify as well the size of some of these files, I, I remember one site I worked with, I think one day's logs was about eight gigabytes. So, you know, to, to, to send this around and like a lot of these third party services, basically you've got to, FTP or log files over somewhere, and it can take a day to send them over. It's 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 pretty crazy. So, but yeah, for large sites, you would be absolutely amazed at what Google tries to crawl and the longevity of its memory in terms of URL structures and the sort of crap it'll crawl. Um, and they will keep trying to crawl some stuff. So you know, with really large sites, yeah. You know, when you're into multi-million page sites, you're probably going to be looking at this as, as well as enterprise class crawlers for your site. OK, let's call it an excellent answer from you guys. Thank you very much for that. All right, let's um, move on to the next door. No, actually, it's th that time again. It's thank you for watching time. Well, I, I thought we had a great set of questions tonight, and uh, we thank you for them. And if uh, when you're watching this, uh, we, we thank you for your interest. Uh, your uh, uh, interest in, in what we do makes what we do worthwhile, and for that we are truly grateful. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Uh, but for now, um, it's um, good night and thank you very much.